Good evening and welcome to Hella Kuwait, the live show that captures every single aspect of Kuwait, whether it's an event, your activity, you name it. As always, we've got plenty of exciting topics. Tonight, we're going to start off with our first report, which is the inauguration of the National Assembly of the 15th legislative term that took place yesterday. So let's check it out together. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah inaugurated today the first regular session of the National Assembly's 15th legislative term. Addressing the Parliament session, His Highness the Emir referred to the surrounding hazards, which he has repeatedly warned against, and the colossal challenges that hinder the efforts aiming to protect the nation and its security and stability, satisfy citizens and maintain their dignity, as well as securing a dignified future for them and for the future generations. His Highness the Emir said that it's worrying that the dangers have been escalating and the challenges are growing as brutal terrorism has found its way to the peaceful and safe nation, seeking to ignite addition and break the national unity. His Highness the Emir told the MPs that the Kuwaiti people have put their trust in them, urging the legislators to be eager not to break the trust and to raise the level of people's confidence. His Highness the Emir urged the MPs to hold Kuwait's interests above all other personal family, sectoral, tribal and class considerations. Concluding his speech, His Highness the Emir emphasized confidence that Kuwait, which has overcome the hardships through history, will be able to counter all challenges and dangers with the help of Allah and its loyal people. This come as Marzouk Ali al Ghanim was elected as the Speaker of the National Assembly this morning. Member of Parliament Hamad Al Harshani, who presided over the first session of the Parliament's 15th legislative term as the oldest legislator, said that Al Ghanim received 48 votes, as his two rivals, Abdullah Al Rumi and Shuaib Al Muizri, had 9 and 8 votes respectively. The election of the Speaker was conducted in line with Article 92 of the Kuwaiti Constitution and Article 28 of the National Assembly Bylaw, which both provide that the National Assembly elects at its first sitting and for the duration of its term a President and a Deputy President from amongst the members. Born in 1968, Al-Ghanim earned a BA in Mechanical Engineering and held the post of Pobien Petrochemicals Chairman. He was also a board member of the Egypt Kuwait Holding Company, the Building Materials Company, and Global Telecom. Elected MP in 2006, 2008, and 2009, and also in 2012, Al Ghanim was Speaker of the 2013 Parliament. Welcome back. That was the 15th inauguration of the National Assembly. I'm here with our first guest for tonight, Dr. Khaled Njinfawi. He's a political analyst and a columnist. Hello and welcome to our show, Doctor. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you here on the show. Can you tell us more about the aspirations of the Kuwaiti peoples and citizens of the new parliament? And we just saw a report on that. So can you tell us more about sure. it? Uh, well, the, uh, well, we as Kuwaitis um, aspire for um, yeah, hopefully a successful parliament or at least uh, members of parliament who understand uh, our aspirations. Basically, some of, the, um, say, some of the major issues that we need our um, parliament to deal with are, say, issues like economic issues, security issues, housing services and maybe the improvement of uh, health services and also maybe the improvement of our education. So we have so many aspirations uh, for our uh, colleagues at the parliament but we, and we wish them the best in their 
new job and hopefully they would uh, always remember that when the Kuwaiti people or the voters uh, went to the polling stations and voted, they wanted them to be more understanding of their aspirations. I mean, our aspirations are similar to the aspirations of other people in different societies around the world. But basically, primarily, most of our, you know, we are more interested in a parliament that is very serious about uh, the economic issues and uh, a parliament that deals with our security challenges in a more uh, rational and more comprehensive uh, manner and we also aspire for uh, members of, the, of our parliament to be more understanding of the sensitivity of our region, meaning our Kuwait is part of this Gulf region and the whole region itself is going through very sensitive um, say situations and, and even circumstances if you like. And thus uh, remembering such uh, things, uh, remembering the issues that the Kuwaiti people have actually voted for, for uh, say, basically the economic issue and um, basically contributing to the development of a constructive dialogue with the mm. government would hopefully lead to uh, a more successful parliament, say, than the outgoing one. Yeah. So the members of the new parliament playing such an important and major role here in Kuwait. Yeah. Can you give us more of a brief history as to the National Assembly and the members throughout the years? Indeed. Well, uh, our Kuwaiti democracy has uh, really deep roots in history. Uh, meaning we, one can trace the uh, roots of our democracy to the beginning of the 20th century, but uh, officially, the, uh, basically, the, um, the parliamentarily, parliamentarian, parliamentarian system began in 1961, and uh, so far we have 15 legislative assemblies. Uh, the, the current one is the 15th. And thus we have um, almost more than 50 years of uh, democratic experiences, and we um, basically uh, should feel proud about this uh, uh, heritage, uh, democratic heritage, and uh, it should also remind us this deep, these deep roots in democracy should always remind us that uh, we should um, guard or let's say protect our democracy from being violated by any um, say negative issues like mm -hmm. say uh, the um, tendency of example, for example, of some people to uh, ignite sectarian or tribal uh, issues that are not really appropriate or not really suitable to our united, if you like, and uh, well uh, united s society. In addition to this, we, we can also um, um, remind our uh, you know, parliament or the mem mem members of the parliament that uh, while they um, say do their job in the, in the parliament, they should remember that they come from a, a country, they come from a society that has deep roots in democracy. And remembering that issue, remember, remembering that heritage should basically hopefully enlighten them to what they should do, meaning mm -hmm. to contribute once again into constructing or or, or maybe uh, contributing to the establishment of this very constructive dialogue with the government for the sake of basically achieving our national aspirations uh, and goals. Yes, Dr. Khaled, you said a very important key word, which is united society. Can you tell us more of the type of key factors that we need in order to have this unified society? Yes. Well, uh, so yeah, we have um, already um, a very united society because we share, uh, as Kuwaitis, we share so many uh, cultural uh, issue, values, if you like, and moral values. We uh, you know, um, basically aspire to the same uh, national goals. We also have a have a shared common, if you like, social heritage and uh, religious heritage. We are all almost always, all of us, almost 90 percent or 99 percent Muslims. Uh, in addition to having also had non-Muslim Kuwaitis. But the idea here is that we, as a, a society, as a Kuwaiti society, have this very special and unique uh, uh, characteristic, which is basically uh, we have um, um, a very united social fabric, a very strong strong social fabric that is very uh, unique in the region. Uh, maybe if you look around the region, you might find uh, different societies with different, let's say, classes and different uh, religious and racial, if you like, um, and tribal groups. But in Kuwait, all in Kuwait became with time the melting pot of many different people, people who came from different parts of the, of the region, either from Iran or Iraq or, or the Arabian Peninsula or m many other places. And thus, we, we, ha we enjoy this 
prosperous, uh, very united, and uh, really highly educated society. I mean, we have uh, yani a highly educated um, you know, youth, we have a highly educated um, you know, individuals, we have really very well and uh, well enlightened you know, society. And, and this is, these, these features are really very unique and very special and very exceptional if you uh, look at them within the you know, regional context. And thus we should always remember that our democracy has already helped us establish this very unified society unless we respect, say, um, our united fronts, our, our uh, common uh, moral values, unless we continue to uh, uh, solidify our national unity, uh, nothing will, will, will improve in Kuwait. So thus, hopefully, our, uh, the, mem the members of the parliament will always remember that um, dealing coming out of this united soci society should encourage them to be more constructive rather than being belligerent or rather than being or trying to find you know issues or deal with uh, controversial issues. And they always should remember that they have um, uh, this, um, let's say, um, authorization from the Kuwaiti uh, you know, individuals or Kuwaiti, uh, Kuwaiti people that they should you know, deal with this uh, um, authorization in a very positive and constructive manner. Yes. From your perspective, Doctor, what do you think of the 15th Legislative National Assembly? How do you see it? Um, well, I, well, from my personal perspective, from what I read in, um, you know, in, uh, in, um, uh, in national news about uh, the outcome of the uh, recent legislative, uh, say, results and also the formation of the uh, parliament committees and the kind of discourse that began maybe yesterday and even today, uh, well, I'm very optimistic about what you know, what this new legislative assembly or this new parliament will do, because they seem, yeah, many of the members of the parliament sh seems to be aware and already conscious about what they should do. Meaning, they should focus uh, on the issues that uh, Kuwaiti or the Kuwaiti people needs them to focus on. For example, they are seems to be aware of their, uh, let's say, national and moral uh, responsibility toward the, the Kuwaiti culture and Kuwaiti society. And uh, hopefully they would will produce uh, or will engage in, in a more uh, constructive dialogue among themselves and also with the government. Because unless they, they establish this uh, constructive dialogue with the government, nothing will happen and nothing will be achieved. Dr. Khalid, we'll continue on. However, we've got a short break, so stay tuned. Welcome back. We're continuing on our interview with Dr. Khaled Jinfawi. He is a political analyst and columnist. So there's something very unique in the National Assembly. We only see one female member, Safa Al Hashim, yes. in the Parliament. So can you tell us what is the reason behind that? Well, maybe um, 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 there are so many and many and different reasons for the um, the. the the success of only one female member, meaning uh, Safa Al Hashim being the only female member of parliament, uh, you know, should give us the opportunity to really uh, examine the uh, the um, the fundamental reasons for such a phenomena. Meaning, you would expect uh, a society that has at least 50% uh, of its members being females to only produce uh, one, only one, one mem member mm. of parliament. I think this also goes back to the um, kind of social issues and political and maybe religious issues and even moral issues that we have to uh, uh, re-examine in regards to the position of women in Kuwait. Meaning the Kuwaiti woman has already proven her uh, worth in so many you know, aspects of our daily life. She has already contributed so much 
to the development of our culture and economy and education and science. And it's very strange not to have more than, one, say, one member of parliament being uh, our colleague uh, Safa Al Hashim. But I think uh, maybe the uh, members of the parliament or the parliament as a whole should raise the issue of, about why only one woman won the, say, the, the vote and whether uh, she, a woman or quote woman, were. Um, I'm prepared for such uh, a position. I think they are already prepared and they have the background to uh, have a more positive impact on uh, in the elections. And I think uh, Kuwaiti women also has the uh, have the ability to be more effective members of parliament. I mean, throughout my experience and observing and uh, looking and reading about the uh, elections, I have noticed that mo most of the uh, female members of parliament of the Kuwaiti women were more effective when it comes to legislation and when it comes to constructing or uh, contributing to the construct to a constructive dialogue with the government so they uh, one way or the other they have the um, uh, the let's say the the capacity or the potential to to be very effective you know in the parliament I, and I so i think maybe if one would be uh, more realistic about the issue i think it goes back the uh, lack of uh, or the reduced number of female members in the parliament might be uh, might relate more to the um, to the kind of social issues or to the kind of social, let's say, identity we have in Kuwait, or maybe to the kind of social b fabric we have so far, we assume that w after 50 years of democratic experience that uh, we have um, a more advanced uh, political awareness in regards to uh, socia social equality and equality between the genders, say, between men and women, and thus ultimately one would expect uh, that such a culture, such a, such a society, would 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 give women more opportunities to contribute into the into the building of of culture and and, and economy and and the country as a whole. So maybe um, uh, maybe um, let's say civil societies in Kuwait should uh, take on this issue and maybe re-examine it in either in forums or in symposiums and to figure out really what is going on, why, why is it only one member of the parliament, whereas most of the uh, voting voters are actually females, mm. and whether we need to address any um, issues that might have prevented women from you know, succeeding in the parliament, whether women uh, are, say, facing difficulties in being uh, marginalized by tribal groups or maybe very extreme religious groups or is it because of the lack of uh, political awareness in our culture about the you know, the role of women so it's a it should be a very comprehensive uh, um, let's say approach uh, in order to uh, find let's say solutions to this problem the problem of uh, not really fully representing Kuwait women as they should be represented and thus maybe hopefully we um, um, we would aspire we wish that uh, our colleague Safa Al Hashim would would uh, raise this issue the issue of women not being able to succeed in the uh, last elections and w she should also raise so many questions about whether there are there are some issues that have already prevented women from reaching the parliament and um, ultimately ultimately our culture will our society will develop and uh, maybe hopefully in the next um, parliament we'll see more um, female members of parliament yes hopefully. hopefully and can you tell us more about the parliament in this parliament will we see more new rules and regulations for women in general um, well, hopefully they would they will focus more on um, uh, women issues, uh, say um, either issues that deal that that would help women to uh, overcome some of the uh, say um, uh, difficulties they face in, in society, mm. whether it come whether it relates more to their families or whether it relates to their you know to their equality in in, in, in our society. And um, we uh, basically, have, um, personally, I, I would, I, I would expect uh, Ms. Safal Hashim to focus on such women issues, mm. but I don't expect the other.